Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video. It is another roundup video. We've got some news to talk about. We've got the latest on the little messy story. We've got Arsenal accepting a bid from one of their midfielders from Newcastle. We've got the potential domino effect that's leading from the Romelu Lukaku situation. We'll see another Serie A striker leave their club to join Inter. And we have the latest on the Latoro Martinez situation as well. But before we go any further, I would like to remind you all to please like the video and also subscribe if you're new. Both things are always and for be greatly appreciated. But for now, let's get back to talking about the latest news stories, beginning with arguably what is set to be the biggest free transfer of all time, possibly the biggest transfer of all time in itself, the Lionel Messi situation. So we begin by talking about the Argentine superstar, and it's being said that yesterday PSG made a formal two-year offer, a two-year deal put on the table towards Lionel Messi. Of course, this, like I say, will be the biggest free transfer in football history. There is no doubt in my mind about that. This could be the biggest transfer of all time. There's no doubt about that. The Argentine superstar made a very teary-eyed farewell to Barcelona yesterday in a press conference that he did early in the morning. On the same day, reports began to emerge that PSG had officially offered the 34-year-old a two-year contract with the French club. It is expected that he will accept and he will sign this contract. Then after going through the normal formalities, of course, including, of course, a medical, Messi will be officially unveiled as a PSG player. Fair play to PSG. The French club have pulled off an absolute madness in this transfer window already. And by acquiring Lionel Messi, the man, the myth, the legend, the goat, that is Messi. They will, of course, have made it even more impressive, even better. Because let's face it, acquiring the likes of Wijnaldum, Gianluigi Donnarumma and Sergio Ramos on our free transfer is impressive in itself. Hakimi as well coming in for £80 million from Inter is also a pretty good deal in my opinion. But of course, the icing on the cake, the icing on this particular cake is of course the free transfer of Lionel Messi. Still the goat of football, still amazingly strong at 34 years of age. Incredible to think that this transfer window has happened the way it has done for PSG. And if you're a PSG fan, of course, I bet you are loving life right now because this is absolutely insane what is going on at your club. Financially, there does seem to be something suspicious about how PSG can afford to pay their current players and bring in these kinds of stars for the massive money that they have. I know that PSG, of course, have a lot of money, but let's face it, financial fair play, money rules and regulations in football, they're only very loosely put into the game to affect the bigger clubs. It's mainly the smaller clubs of the leagues that they affect the most, but that is another topic for another day. The bottom line here is that this is going to be a gargantuan signing uh, about to be made here by PSG and it is heavily and it will heavily benefit not just them but the French league as well getting more eyes on the product particularly from South America of course because obviously Messi is a massive superstar not just in Europe but of course where he's from in Argentina as well plus I imagine that shirt sales are about to take an all-time hit, an all-time high. And a lot of them are going to have Messi's name on them as well. So, fair play. Our next story brings us to another constant story that's been happening throughout this summer. And it is revolving around Latoro Martinez. Could he be on his way to Tottenham? Tottenham? We knew that this story had been thrown around for a while about the future of Latoro Martinez. We know that Arsenal have been heavily linked with signing him. And it looked like the deal was very much on the cards for the Gunners. And that, you know, should they decide to pursue it further, this deal was there for the taking. But it seems that their fierce rivals Tottenham have entered the mix. We knew that there was rumoured interest from Tottenham due to the Harry Kane situation. Uh, and it does seem like Tottenham are willing and prepared to swoop in 
for the Argentine striker. Reports emerged yesterday that Spurs are willing to pay the £60 million fee that is said to be the asking price of the 23-year-old. Um, and like I say, the chances are is that Spurs probably realise that they're fighting a losing battle with their star striker Harry Kane, expecting to keep him and expecting him to stay, and that they're expecting Manchester City to come in and double their efforts in signing the striker. So Martinez would be the obvious and pretty good replacement in all honesty. Um, it was said earlier in this transfer window that Inter were open to selling Martinez, but with obviously everything that is happening with the Romelu Lukaku situation and the U-turn that he's performed, and now he wants to move to Chelsea. And with that deal looking uh, seemingly being a matter of hours or a matter of days away from full completion, Inter want to try and keep hold of their other star striker. Will they be able to? I don't know, because as we know, Financial issues are affecting that club pretty highly right now. And, you know, if they can't afford to shift a few other players on ahead of Martinez, then maybe if the right bid comes in for the 23-year-old Argentine, then maybe they'll be forced to accept that particular bid in order to try and acquire more money. But for now, we wait and see. We wait and see what will happen to the future of the Toro Martinez. Arsenal are interested, Tottenham are interested, but with Chelsea winning the race to sign Romelu Lukaku, it seems it seems that this deal may be a little bit more difficult to achieve now because of that. The story has just got even more interesting though. Will he become Harry Kane's replacement at Tottenham? Will Arsenal make a bid in the 11th hour to try and land him? Or will he be staying at Inter? I'd love to know your thoughts, comments, opinions and predictions and whatever else you want to call it down below in the comments section on this story. I'm sure they'll all make for interesting reading. We touched upon Lukaku in our last story, so why not talk about what happened over the weekend with him? Uh, I know this news is obviously a couple of days old, but I still feel it's relevant to put into here since I haven't talked about it. Chelsea and Inter basically over the weekend struck up a deal for the Belgian striker, a fee worth in the region said to be £97.5 million. Pounds. It's said to be how much Chelsea will pay to bring him back to Stamford Bridge, bring him back to Chelsea for his return. This has obviously been one hell of a roller coaster of a story that I talked about a lot in these videos over the course of this past summer. Uh, but now it seems to be reaching its conclusion. It's expected that in the coming days, everything will be done and dusted and it's uh, and the I's are all dotted, the T's are all crossed, the paperwork will be completed and signed and a medical will be completed after taking place before the official unveiling of Lukaku back at Stamford Bridge in a Chelsea shirt once again. In my opinion, this is great business by Chelsea. We've obviously seen Lukaku grow and improve a lot since being away, uh, being away from Chelsea and even away from the Premier League in Serie A, of course. And with the creativity behind him now and the likes of Christian Pulisic, uh, Kai Havertz and Mason Mount, just to name a few. And with the crossing range of both Ben Chilwell and Rhys James, you've got to imagine that Lukaku will be seeing plenty of chances for his way. And with his improved finishing, you've got to say that he might be in with a shout of golden boot next season. And maybe even going further beyond that, of course. This move certainly, in my opinion, increases Chelsea's chances of becoming Premier League champions next season. But whether they will or not, of course, remains to be seen. But it certainly adds another layer that just made both Chelsea and the Premier League title race for next season even more interesting to watch and discuss. And our next story is a part of the clear and obvious domino effect that is happening right now. Lukaku leaves Inter Milan, so Inter Milan are in need of a new striker. And who do they get? Well, they've turned their attention to the current Roma and former Manchester City forward Edin Dzeko. He is reportedly edging ever closer to a move to Inter Milan. The only thing that is potentially holding up this deal is Roma wanting to get in a replacement themselves for the 35-year-old, and that is all according to Fabrizio Romano. 
Jacko is expected to sign a two-year contract to Inter when, obviously, Roma bring in a replacement for him. The big transfer domino effect takes another domino as that continues. And finally, we come to Arsenal. Arsenal have accepted a £25 million bid from Newcastle for their midfielder, Joe Willock. Newcastle have not made any signings at all in this transfer window, but could that be about to change here? The midfielder was spent the second half of last season on loan with Newcastle and made 14 appearances, scoring eight goals for the Magpies. Important goals too, not just any goals, but important goals. They were goals that helped Newcastle survive in the Premier League last season and get into that sort of mid-table sort of finish, that lower to mid-table sort of finish. Personal terms and a medical are, of course, all that stand in their way of this move being made official. Uh, and from my personal opinion, I don't believe that Willock is worth 25 million, and that's why Arsenal have accepted the bid because that's the, probably the, about the most amount of money that they may get from a guy like Willock. And I think I know that Newcastle's preseason hasn't exactly been the most harmonious, hasn't been exactly the the best preseason uh, going around, and I think that maybe they needed to overpay, maybe just a little bit to sort of say that they've got a signing and of course with Willock having a decent spell on loan last season maybe it does make sense that they would go for a guy like him but um, I think for Willock even in himself I think this will be a good move for him I think he was on the outskirts of the first team of Arsenal for last season which is why the loan move came about his loan brought about some really good form for him breathed new life into his game there's the possibility now that he can go on and continue to grow and evolve with Steve Bruce's side so I do think that it was probably best for all parties that they got this deal done Newcastle finally sign a player Arsenal get a pretty decent fee for Willock and Willock gets a fresh start at a new club I think it's a win I think it's a win, win, win for all parties involved in this one. But of course, these are just the thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, whatever you want to call it, of this guy. I want to know what you guys think. What do you make of any of these new stories that I talked about in this video? What do you make of Lionel Messi having a two-year offer on the table from PSG? What do you make of the Latoro Martinez situation? Could he be going to Tottenham? Could he be going to Arsenal? Or could he be staying with Inter Milan for the, for, for the foreseeable future? What do you make of Romelu Lukaku signing for Chelsea or about to sign for Chelsea and make that official? What do you make of Edin Dzeko uh, in part of this transfer domino effect? What about him going to Inter Milan? And of course, what do you make of Joe Willock about to possibly sign for Newcastle United pending on personal terms and a medical, of course. I'd love to know your thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, whatever you want to call it, down below in the comments section because I'm sure they'll all make for interesting reading. Otherwise, hit that like button on the way out. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you're new or want to see more content like this. Both things are always and forever be greatly appreciated. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and listening. I've been Fletch. This has been another Fletch Talks video. And I will see you, sweet of you all again soon in another video.